off and I hadn't even started yet. <laughs> I run an incubator in Chicago called 1871, which is the largest incubator for startups in the United States. Basically, uh, we have 500 companies under one roof and about 2,000 entrepreneurs who come to 1871 every day. And they invent the future because that's what entrepreneurs do. They look at our everyday world <clears throat> and they see a world that could be and a world that could become. Now, in the 1950s, not so long ago, the world was pretty great. And we grew up at a time, those of us who are a thousand years old, grew up at a time when the world was sadly quite, quite gray. Uh, and that hasn't changed too terribly much. But we see change coming, and that's part of what we're responsible for doing. We have a charity in Chicago called Chicago Cares, and each year, on one day, they take 5,000 volunteers and they send them to schools throughout the city to repaint, to clean, to repair what's going on, and believe me, the schools need it. And so we sent a team recently to do exactly this, uh, and we sent them basically to a school, a nearby school, which was a STEM school, uh, focusing on science and technology and engineering and math <clears throat> and on gender equality. And they got to the school and they were given a math stencil and they were given basically a hallway and a stairwell to paint. And so they set out to do their job and there was only one problem and the problem was that the stencil sucked because it was a group of gray men. And so after 60 years, we're still dealing with the man in the gray flannel suit. We're still dealing with this problem. <clears throat> and the problem is unconscious bias. The problem is something that we see and deal with every day. We spend a great deal of time and energy talking about this issue, but what we found is this. You can explain things to people until your face falls off, but you can't understand for them. And so it's in the actions, it's in the doing that this understanding comes to pass. So they took this stencil, <clears throat> and because we're nothing if we're not work, they set about it, and about midway through the stenciling process and said, you know, we didn't come this far to not make a difference, to not make an impact. So they changed the game, which is what entrepreneurs and innovators do all the time. And they added some colors and they added some gender. <clears throat> and lo and behold, they transformed this entire process into something that basically said, it's not what we look at, but it's what we'll see. And so they made a difference for these people for their entire lives, and not simply for them, but for every single student who will walk up and down those stairwells going forward. Now, this thing about unconscious bias is it's not limited to gender. We share and we have the same kinds of problems around <clears throat> every part of our life. And so, one of my favorite entrepreneurs is a very elegant older woman. She's in her 70s. I'm sure she doesn't want me to admit that, but I do love her pearls. And she went recently into a bank in New York, right here in New York City, and she said, I need to borrow $10,000 for a trip I must take. And they said, well, you seem like a perfectly responsible and wonderful woman, but we don't know you from Adam. So it's not our custom to lend money to people who are not our customers. And she said, but I'm very responsible. And they said, we don't really care. And she said, and I have fabulous collateral. And so they said, well, now you're talking. And so they took the keys from the car and they gave her the $10,000, and off she went on her trip, came back in a week, gave him the $10,000 back, along with $6.10 in interest, got her keys and was walking out the door, and they said, one moment, please. We just have a question. We checked out your bank in Scarsdale. They would have lent you $10,000 or $25,000 or $50,000. They've known your family forever. How did you come to our bank and to select us for the $10,000 loan? And she said, well, where else in New York City could you park a car for a week for $6.10? And so, so this is the world that entrepreneurs look at. And we have two important things that we need to do. Number one, we have to make room for people and we have to understand that with all their talents and with all their skills and with all their capabilities, they're a package deal. And they come with a little bit on the on the edge, a little bit of oddities. And that's fine, because we have to broaden the pool. And second of all, we have to understand that we have no innovation. It's impossible without inclusion. And so when you put all those people together, 
when you bring all that energy together and all that diversity together, you have the opportunity to change and repair the world. Thank you very much.